President Trump continued his football fight for the fifth straight day in the middle of a diplomatic appearance with the Prime Minister of Spain. Well, I wasn't preoccupied with the NFL. I was uh, ashamed of what was taking place because, to me, that was a very important moment. I don't think you can disrespect our country, our flag, our national anthem. I've heard that before about was I preoccupied. Not at all. Not at all. I have plenty of time on my hands. All I do is work. For people to disrespect that by kneeling during the playing of our national anthem, I think, is disgraceful. There's a long history of public protest in sports from the 68 Olympics and the now iconic display of raised fists from U.S. medalist Tommy Smith and John Carlos to Bill Russell, NBA legend and winner of the Presidential Medal of Freedom, sending out this message today of solidarity. Trump's request that players be sanctioned for their free speech does have precedent. Those very Olympians were suspended for the raised fists. Most team owners, though, lately have been rejecting that kind of approach. And while the backlash that athletes should just play, be quiet, and be grateful is itself causing controversy, author Jelani Cobb writing in a new piece that when people lecture black athletes to just savor their position in silence, they're pushing a toxic stereotype. Quote, ungrateful is the new uppity, he writes in a piece drawing much discussion today. Jelani Cobb is here. What do you see? in this dispute? Well, I mean, I think it's pretty clear. Uh, we did not see the president talk in these kind of strident terms about uh, the uh, neo-fascist groups that were protesting in, in Charlottesville, that he's reserved this bile uh, for these athletes who, by and large, are African-American. Uh, he's accused them of uh, you know, behavior that he found, quote, unquote, shameful, which is uh, almost surreal, given you know, the track record that he has compiled during his time in office of having disrespected virtually every major institution in American life and American democracy, along with very many individuals uh, in the society as well. And so what people are actually doing here is engaging in their constitutionally protected right to protest. Mm -hmm. uh, and you would think that a president that understood democracy would say that, while I might not agree with it, this is actually protected. But that's not what he said. Right. And talk about democracy. Uh I'm going to put up on the screen something you wrote about, you said Trump being a small man. Would you, mm -hmm. This is your words. So I'll let you read them right oh. there. Uh, Trump is a small man with a fetish for the symbols of democracy and a bottomless hostility for the actual practice of it. Hmm. What do you mean by that, the practice of it? So when we look at you know, the, the institutions of American democracy and the values and the norms and so on, that we've seen him consistently attack uh, and insult them. He's insulted the press. He's insulted the intelligence community. Uh, he's insulted the majority leader in his own party. He's insulted the, the House Speaker of his own party. Uh, he has insulted a Gold Star family. Uh, we can kind of go through the litany of these uh, individuals and, and entities that he has taken aim at. Uh, and with very little concern, it seemed seemingly very little concern for the bigger ripple effect of what this does to the society at large. Mm -hmm. That you know, democracy, as I've always said, you know, whenever I talk with my students, that democracy is really a frail thing. That we haven't right. been doing it that long, right. and it's like a person who's quit smoking. That the general habit of human history has been autocracy and tyranny, and that we've broken with that habit relatively recently. It's right. like a person who quit smoking three weeks ago. Right, and that we are always. Uh, in danger if we are not patrolling it together as a pluralistic society. I mean, that's what comes through in your piece, that's why right. people are responding to it. Stay with me, because I want to bring in, for another view, uh, a former Trump campaign surrogate, David Wool, who argues none of this is about race, and the players are actually protesting in the wrong place at the wrong time. Uh, David, what do you mean by that? Well, let me start by saying, look at Mr. Cobb's exercising of his First Amendment rights. How eloquent, how powerful, how appropriate form of protest he used to get his point across. When you're talking about kneeling at the national anthem, it's completely inappropriate. Look, what you're talking about is how your actions are perceived, and this is what the players have to be sensitive to, by the fans, by the millions of fans who fill the stadiums, the fans who watch the telecast, the fans who buy the merchandise. These fans are passionate about the team. They're passionate about the sport. Mm -hmm. They're passionate about the way that patriotism is interwoven the into the fabric of American sports. David, sport. do you think the government should then be instructing private companies to fire them for that free speech? No, I don't, think he, I don't think Mr. Trump was instructing anyone. He was acting, he was talking in a form of outrage that many millions of Americans felt that these players who basically are doing the same thing as throwing the middle finger at the flag, at the troops who have died for our rights of freedom, at the fans and at American in general, 
why should they continue to be mm -hmm. employed by teams that benefit from the millions of dollars that these hard right. patriotic well, you're saying fans it will somewhat fail like the, with. somewhat like the president Jelani, go ahead but let's just be very clear uh, that you know these uh, players are being given the amount of money they're giving because they're generating vastly larger sums for the people who own those these stadiums, for the people who own these teams, for the people who sell this merchandise and so on. So this is not a uh, you know philanthropy or charity in any kind of uh, you know way, shape, or form. And then secondly, you know Mr. Trump explicitly said that they should fire fire them right before he called them SOBs. Uh, and so there's there's really no way around that. Uh, I appreciate David you know calling me articulate. But I think that the fact of the matter is that their protest was articulate. It got us to actually have this conversation. Well, you know, I, David, here's the problem with it, though. You're bite, they're biting off their nose to spite their faces. They're damaging their industry. They're damaging their profession. They're damaging their careers and future ball players as well because the boycotts are coming. I mean, we saw already some empty seats in stadiums. You saw fans burning jerseys. You saw fans destroying hats. You saw outrage among millions of fans who are completely sickened by yeah, people, what they perceive as a disrespectful act toward toward America and toward the national anthem. People and, burned you know, LeBron James jersey because wallets, he left Cleveland Johnny. and went to Miami. Uh, and so, uh, no, that's, that's not going to be the arbiter for this. Besides the fact that there's never been, for people who are in power and people who are comfortable, there has never been a convenient time for people who have, uh, you know, dissent to express their views. There's always a problem. People said that about Rosa Parks. Uh, people said that about Dr. King. Uh, people said that about abolitionists. You're, you're doing well, this in the wrong way. Uh, there's always well, a you, kind of concern that you're making people uncomfortable. Well, the, the point is that we've been uncomfortable with the issue of police and police policing uh, and police brutality in our communities. And so they simply wanted to make a point, to get a point across, that the, the values that we purportedly hold as a society, they are not extended to everyone in the society equally, you know and what? they did it you in a way what, that brought attention to it. I agree with you. You know what I think? The targets of the protest need to be the people causing the problems, the police, the police stations, the federal authorities. But when you, the target of the protest is the national anthem, the patriotic sort of song that is America, people get offended and your message is lost. People, and I, that's I suppose, the big David, problem. I guess that we're almost out of time. David, the problem is, like the president, you're still taking the position that you should have the final word. Uh, and that's understandable. A lot of people want the final word on what other people should do. That's not how free speech works in a democracy. As an attorney, I would think you, you would recognize that. No, I recognize the right of free speech. I also recognize the right of employers to prohibit free speech on the company clock. And I also recognize the rights of fans to speak with their wallets. And when they see something offensive, they'll respond in, in due kind. And, and final I'll word, tell you what, it's going to hurt the players, bottom line. Jelani, final word. Well, if that were the case, if we were trying to say that we wouldn't have politics engaged in sports at all, we would never have had the national anthem played and we would never have had the military there in the first place. We would say we want no uh, kind of recognition of anything relating to any political institution in the United States, but we don't say that. We say that we want the military to be recognized, we want the flag to be saluted, we want the national anthem to be played, and those in and of itself are political acts. Jelani Cobb Good and David for you, Wool, Jelani. thank you both for being here. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.